So on the whole, everything is going great in both the studios, but they, you know, there's always small issues to deal with though. For instance, a week or so ago, we added algae eaters to this tank. They are doing a great job. They still haven't sort of just decimated all of the algae yet, but the majority of it is gone. There's a few little stringy bits on some of these top plant areas, but I think that's mainly because there's so much for them to choose from. Eventually that will whittle down and they'll just get everything from everywhere. That said though, the tank does look really, really good, doesn't it? <laughs> And as always, the rare fish eco, well, rare fish for me anyway, rare fish ecosystem is looking so, so good, isn't it? I absolutely love this tank, the ease of it all, just, and the beauty of all these small fish as well. That said though, even though this tank is fully on autopilot mode, like I don't, I don't have to do anything to this apart from top it up now, I still need to do some maintenance on it, and that maintenance is trimming. I'm at the point now where it has to be done, or I'll just leave it and then break it down. <laughs> Now it's nothing complicated that needs doing, but like for instance, this massive bush of rotala and pearlweed in this section, that needs cutting right back because it's going to be stopping the flow. Some of the background plants as well, the flow's still getting past as you can sort of see a few flicking around in the background there, but it's being heavily reduced. And what that means is up in this foreground area here, waste just sort of sits on the bottom and that will build up over time, which is what we don't want. Look at how gorgeous that female um, koi guppy is. So pretty, isn't she? Oh yeah, and a lot of the babies, look, they're doing really well. I think they're past that size now where they're gonna get munched on by the other fish. And they, they're all in the open water, they're all confident, swimming and eating great. So we should get even more of these koi guppies soon. I hope so anyway. Now I think it's safe to call this whole ecosystem a complete success, isn't it? Because if we've got all those babies being born and given the amount of plump females, they're gonna be born pretty regularly in here. If they're, if they're providing a food source for all the bigger fish, which I'm sure some of them will be getting picked off, then it is a true natural ecosystem, isn't it? Now, to be honest, I could probably stop the feeding. Um, it means it probably gets zero survival rates from the babies, but I could probably do that. I don't want to do that and I'm not gonna do that, but I could do it, couldn't I? Look at that male there. Look at that gorgeous male. You gotta focus, there we go, look at that. Oh, look at the dirty glass as well. We need to sort that out, don't we? Scrapey, scrapey, scrapey. This is actually pretty good. It's probably been three weeks since I've done this and I think anyone can deal with that level of scrapage in their aquarium, can't they? Once every three weeks, it's pretty fine, isn't it? I mean, it takes seconds to do, to be honest. Right then, it's now time to trim up a load of the plants, which you've all seen a hundred times. So we're just gonna fast forward through this step. Right, that has absolutely opened everything right up. Look at the background. You can see now the water can flow completely all the way around. I was gonna trim these foreground plants, but they're looking good at the moment. I don't feel like they need, well, there's one piece of rotala there that needs sorting out, isn't there? I've made an absolute mess of the tank though. It's got that really weird sort of brownie murkiness to it. That was all of the detritus that was caught up in those areas because they're being blasted with flow. They're just getting trapped, isn't it? So we've cleared that out. And look, you can see at the top here, look, there's quite a lot of like plants and things that all need to be fished out. Some of the duckweed as well. One cool thing though is look at this. The Hygophila pinnatifida is finally growing out the top of the tank. That's its immersed state right there, which looks completely different to how it is underneath the water. Look at the big leaves underwater, because obviously they're not exposed to um, the atmosphere, so they can be bigger to try and absorb more of the nutrients. Whereas when they come out of the water, they're a lot smaller. Um, completely different looking plant, isn't it? And I think this is one of those occasions where I actually like it better underwater than on top. Oh no, I've got to be really careful because the babies are a bit silly and I've just caught one. Oh, start again. There we go, saw him go. Go away, just, just chew, chew from me. Got to be really careful here. Hopefully they'll all get scared and just completely go away. Most of them in this middle area, so if I just scoop from the sides, we'll be fine. Right, I've been scooping out for like 10 minutes. I've been going really slowly because I didn't want to catch any of those baby guppies, uh, but I think I'm there. <laughs> yeah, there we go, look, looking so good. Need to top the water up now, just an inch. I always keep it below because I don't want any fish jumping out and that have given me good success in the past when I've dropped it by about that much. I, I don't get any fish jumping at all. It's a question I get asked quite often actually. Yeah, none of my fish jump. I never come in here and go, oh, there's fish on the floor. It's just, it's just not a thing. Okay, we're done. Look at how good that's turned out, guys. I think you can all agree, looking fantastic. Oh, I've missed some uh, 
some roots there and some Hygrophila pinnatifida, a dead one. Not to worry, not to worry. Oh yeah, one thing I have added, I had some spare hair grass just sitting around, so I've just chucked it there. Hopefully that grows. <laughs> it's right in the middle. Looks a bit odd, but I just thought I'd go for it. Look, look at this uh, gold laser Corey. Colours on him or her. Look, he's so good. Walk by. And look at the size of his uh, front little whisker thingies. Barbells, are they? Yeah, barbell, barbell, barbells. So people will say that if you've got coarse stones and bigger stones and whatnot, they can wear them down. Apparently that's actually not true and it's a, an infection that causes that because that seems quite evident with all the different sort of types of gravel I've got in here. And these barbells are looking really good to be honest. And we have still got all the babies doing well. Look at those there. I guess I didn't scoop up many of them at all. There's still a lot in this tank. So they're gonna grow up to be absolutely gorgeous, just like the parents, which are right here, look. This male is just not leaving this female alone. Even though, look, see that dark patch at the back? That's all a new sort of clutch of babies in there. So we're getting those out soon as well, awesome. So I'm a bit of a sucker when it comes to moss because I don't keep on top of it very well. Um, and I've found that the moss that we've got in this tank is absolutely perfect because it doesn't grow too fast. And even if it does, it stays looking natural. So this down here is the moss I'm talking about. This is weeping moss, that one there. And then this one here, but the best one of all on the wood look, it just, it looks so natural to me. The way it grows is kind of like higgledy piggledy. It doesn't really get a neatness to it. That's quite a thick layer on there now and it sort of grows everywhere oh you're just trying to be right in the frame aren't you <laughs> and that's actually completely different to the moss that we've got here in the rainbow fish aquarium now this moss right here oh hang on quick one because it's early in the morning look at how beautiful the rainbows are look at the colors on that one is it sunburst sun kiss su sun something it's a sun something and over here look we've got the subdominant male as well so that's the main male of the tank. Look how stuck, bye, bye. Oh yeah, we've got the Bozeman or Bozmani one at the back there, which is gaining his size currently as well. Or well, you might think this flow is crazy fast. I've just cleaned the filter out, so it's fine though, look. They absolutely love it. Remember, they're a fast flowing river fish, dancing and out of all the time. But yeah, I was trying to get over here to talk about this with you, the moss. So look at this, look at how that grows. Some love it and think it looks beautiful, which it does, but to me, it looks very artificial. Like this whole tank now, it looks artificial and the reason I haven't trimmed it back is because I've I've just made a gap actually in there to have a look if I trim this back to where it should be now it will be brown so I think I might need to just sort of start again with this one otherwise I'm just gonna have just brown everywhere and yeah that's not enjoyable for me so I've actually ordered quite a few more pots of the weeping moss that is gonna be my go-to moss moving forwards just because I just love how it looks 